the cost of liberty, the cost of liberty. People today have no idea in America what religious liberty of thought and practice and freedom of speech, really how it got here. Because we didn't have it in the beginning in the colonies of America. You did not have religious liberty and you did not have freedom of speech. At times in history, America has, has come to some very, very hard times to preserve freedom of speech, the right to bear arms, and religious liberty. Today, they, we have a freedom of religion, but we don't have freedom of religion in America, we have freedom from religion. So now let's go back in time and just see what it cost men and people's lives to get us where we are today. <clears throat> in early American colonial days, the Puritans came over here for seeking religious liberty, but they gave religious liberty to no one else. It was a very strict rule. They believed in church and state, and that's exactly what they, ca what they practiced. Here are some of the laws that were passed in early Massachusetts. Massachusetts was a real problem place. Salem, Massachusetts especially. We've all heard about the Salem witch trials. But many times the Salem witch trials were Salem Baptist trials. The people that were ruling America were a very superstitious people. A very superstitious people. Many in England were very, very superstitious. That's how the witch, Salem witch trials got started over superstition. The Baptists held to the Word of God. The Word of God says this, we will do this. They didn't believe in all of the hocus pocus that the Puritans did at that time. Especially Cotton Mather was one of the great leaders at that period of time, and others. It says uh, there was a petition from the Roxbury, Dorchester, and other points dated May 15, 1646 praying that the laws against the Baptists might be strengthened. They were already, their properties were confiscated. Their church houses, if they, were, if they built a church house at all, they would lock the doors and would not let them meet in it. They would have to meet out in the courtyard in the wintertime or in the summertime, whatever it was. It didn't matter. As a prevailings of errors and heresies is noted by our Savior in the Gospel and elsewhere in the Scriptures as a forerunner of God's judgments and is as as much as the errors of the Anabaptist where they do prevail are not a little dangerous to church and commonwealth. Now when they talk about church they call about the church state and these are the Puritans writing. Do prevail are not a little dangerous to the church and commonwealth as lamentably turmoils in Germany. When the said errors were given into a height and did to manifest witness such good laws or orders are enacted against them, against such persons having uh, already uh, been, as we are informed, a special meanness of discouraging multitudes of erroneous persons from comings over into this country. Which was, which we uh, account no small mercy of God unto us. And one sweet and wholesome fruit of the said laws, it is therefore our humble petition to this honorable court that such laws and orders are in force amongst us against the Anabaptists or other erroneous persons like the other groups in this area. Whereby do restrain the spreadings of the bulgings of their errors amongst people may not be abrogated and taken away do not abrogate or take away the laws against them, nor any wise weaken 
but may still be continued. As might be expected, the law of 1644 brought about many reactions among people. The enactment bore severity, and severely, says Felt, upon denomination of whose subsequent uh, precepts and example manifested that they were in general far less from indulging in the reckless and ruinous na notions of, of the German adherence to uh, Stuber and the Jack of Leyden, though honestly suspected of such indulgence by most of the leading men of England, the authors and betters of it were desir desirous to tolerate religious freedom as far as they deem best for the highest good of the commonwealth. King George in England wanted more people to come to America so he'd have more income. And these Puritans that were persecuting and killing and burning and confiscating the property of Anabaptists was against that best, what my, my interest of England. They, for, however, found that as Christian legislatures ever have a very difficult uh, point to be settled. Christian legislators were persecutors, Christian dumb persecutors. They felt, as many do now, that they must bind their toleration short of atheism and infidelity. And where to fix the line exactly, they were not fully satisfied. Many people wanted to give more leniency toward the Baptists. They didn't hurt anybody anyway. It says in November, the General Court, November the 4th, 1646, made the following explanation. The truth is, the great trouble we have been put unto and a hazard also by the familistical and Anabaptist spirits whose conscience and religion have been only to set forth themselves and raise contentions in the country did provoke us to provide for our safety by laws that all such should, should take act notice how unwelcome they should be to us either coming or staying. We want to make sure that they don't come here and we don't want to sure, make sure they don't stay here. But for such as differ from us only in judgment and point of baptism, or some other point uh, less uh, of consequence, and live peacefully among us without occasioning a disturbance, such have no cause to complain, for it has never been as yet put in execution against any of them, although such are known to live among us. Goodman Johnson was another man. He said, uh, to this end, the most agreeable with the rules of Scripture, in every country there be appointed members of a committee, two magistrates, two ministers, two side, two able persons from among the people. In the year 648 these laws were printed so that they might be, be seen by all men, and that some might uh, plead ignorance when they came to America. You come over here to America, there is no religious liberty at all. You can't bring your Baptist ideas to America. You can't bring these Quaker ideas to America. And that none might plead ignorance, and that all persons intending to transport themselves to the colonies might know exactly what to expect when they arrive here. For it is no wrong to any man that a people who have spent their estates, many of them, and ventured their lives to keep the faith and pure conscience should use all means that the word of God allows for maintenance and continuance of the same. Now people, good people that came from England, and they come over here as Puritans, and they spent all their money and sold all their properties there so they come over here and make a new establishment of their lives. And the ones that are Baptists have to know, if you spend all your money, you take everything and, and sell it over there and come over here expecting religious freedom, it's not going to happen. 
Still further, the colonists have taken up desolate wilderness to be their habitation and not deluded any by keeping their profession in a hunger mug, but print and proclaim to all the way at the course of intent, God willing, to walk in, if any will notwithstanding seek to jostle them out of their own right, let them not wonder if they meet with all the opposition a people put to their greatest straits can make. We're going to do everything we can to stop you from coming to this country and staying in this country. Winthrop, Stephen Winthrop. He said in March the 1st, 1644, 1645, here is a great complaint against for our severity against the Anabaptists. It's to discourage many people from coming to us for fear that they should be banished if they dissent from our opinions. None will come to us because you persecute, they say. Mr. Peter writes in that you sent to your son that you persecute. And the elder Winthrop in July the 1st, 1646, with regard to Hugh Peter, I could wish he did not too much continence of the optimistic opinionist, which we do so cast out of New England. He said, uh, I know that he, ignore, he abhors them, but he hath many hang upon him being a man of such use. In some places the law was relaxed. The common people that knew these people like Roger Williams and Dr. John Clark, these people are not bad people. They're good people. They're, they're good citizens. They, they pay their taxes. They, they build their homes. They, they uh, preach righteousness and, and uh, in the commonwealth. Now Massachusetts is one of the colonies, but they were not satisfied with the persecution that they were persecuting, but they wanted all the colonies around them where these Baptists were caused to flee, they wanted them to persecute them also and cast them out in the wilderness so they'll die. And you have to realize this is a brand new land, this is a wilderness. How would you like to have come through Fish Lake Valley in, in 1800 and, or 1645 or something like that in Maryland and be cast out into the wilderness? Pretty harsh country in the wintertime, isn't it? It's about 28 degrees outside right now and it's 75 in the south. But what if they took our homes away from us and cast us out into the wilderness? all of our food sources. You know, later on in America, during the Civil War, Grant and Sherman really abused the South tremendously. They went and killed the civilians, burnt their homes, burned up all their food sources, killed all their animals, burned their fields, burned their fences down. And then when Sherman said, when they went against the American Indians after the Civil War, Sherman said the only good Indian is a dead Indian. So they decided to go up there in the middle of winter time when they're in their winter caps and burn their homes down, cast them out in the wilderness, and burn all the food supplies. That's exactly what was going on right here. They cast them out in the wilderness without anything. He said, we uh, heard here that uh, diverse uh, Anabaptists have sprung up in your jurisdiction. And we wish that you would persecute them like we persecute them. Take their property away. Don't let them stay. Suppress them, it says here. Persecute the offenders. Prosecute them and give justice to them. In other words, uh, burn them, burn their homes down, or confiscate them, burn their food sources down, take their guns away from them, send them out into the wilderness. He 
It says here, there's an act to punish all heretics with death. To, that raise the foundation and all Anabaptists to be banished. All Anabaptists to be banished and they return to England to be hanged unless they recant of their religion. That was Winston's papers in 1651, Salem, Massachusetts. Salem, Massachusetts later became the, the terrible place of the Salem witch trials with Cotton Mather. He said to impose a heavy fine for bringing Quakers in this country on the ship captains and put heavy fines against the ship captains that bought the Baptists in this country. And you have to realize sometimes, like from Wales and England over there, some whole Baptist congregations came here just to live among themselves and mind their own business. It says they're to burn all of their books, all of their literature. One ear is supposed to be cut off for the first offense. Maine. The next year, a fine of total uh, 40 shillings was imposed on every hour of entertainment of a Quaker. They looked upon the Quakers as the same thing as Anabaptists. Imprisonment and total fine was paid, and any Quaker who came into the jurisdiction was to have one ear cut off and put to work in the house of correction. By the way, when you went to prison, you didn't get fed in prison. If your family didn't bring you food, you died. And back in some of these areas in Massachusetts and Maine back there, there was a, what they called a, um, a subspecies of creature living in the bottom of the oceans in those areas that, that looked like spiders and looked like scorpions. And so they catch all these creatures and boil them a little bit and feed them to the prisoners. They were called lobsters. <laughs> Lobster was not fit to eat for anybody else. So they gave them to the prisoners, but now we have that as a delicacy. The penalty to repeated for the second offense, any Quaker who had before suffered the law and returned was uh, severely whipped and sent to the house corrections for the third offense, his tongue was bored through with a hot iron. Mm. Besides his being in prison. The next year, a fine of ten shillings was imposed upon anyone professing Quakerism or Anabaptism, by the way, meeting with the Quakers or, for, or speaking in their meetings. Uh, a, uh, anyone speaking, anyone preaching in one of these meetings was fined. He had an ear cut off. He was fined, he was imprisoned, he was put in hard work. He had his tongue pulled out and put a, a hot branding iron through it. A little later it was enacted that every Quaker found within the jurisdiction, any person who de uh, defended a Quaker or Anabaptist doctrines was to be committed to prison. And if found guilty after trial, they're imprisoned before and if found guilty now, they're in prison before they're found guilty, and then they're, if they're found guilty, they're to be banished on pain of death. And any inhabitant who should favor Quakerism or Anabaptism is to be imprisoned one month and banished on pain of death. Every person that has offended the society, even women, women are to be stripped to the waist and tied to an ox tail, the ox cart's tail, and wear whipped from town to town. They were supposed to be drugged from town to town, naked, their breasts showing, and being beaten with whips. And this was to be carried on a two days journey. They were supposed to be beaten for two days if they lived that long. Into the wilderness among the wolves and bears because the blood was fresh. Quakers and some Anabaptists were hanged in 1659, 1660, and 1661. Governor Endicott was among the most vindictive enemies of these heretics, he said. 
You will not consent. Record it. I thank God I am not afraid to give judgment against these people. He had privately said to certain Quakers, Take heed, yes, ye break not our ecclesiastical laws, for then you are sure to be stretched by a halter, in other words, hung by the neck. Plymouth Colony was extremely severe also, but they didn't execute any Quakers and few Anabaptists. One of the chief grievances of the Baptists and other dissenters was that the people were taxed to support the ministry of the Standing Order, the Puritans. They were taxed and earned money. This is the church state, remember. Your taxes go to the church. And that church supports those preaching against you and persecuting you. So you have to pay for the criminals to, to be criminals, in other words. Yeah, they said that even though these people come in here and they have, want to have their own churches, they're going to pay taxes and they're going to support our preachers because our preachers ought to be supported. But remember, the Quakers and the Baptists at that time, the preachers preached for free. They were not a paid ministry. They said they were above that. The calling of God was above money. In 1657, the congregational grievance against these Baptists. Some of the things recorded in this chapter are almost incredible. That men should be whipped, imprisoned, banished, ears cut off, tongue bored with a hot iron, and put to death in a barbarous matter. That women should be tied to the tail end of a cart, dragged from town to town, and whipped a long way, stripped to the waist, and finally carried into the wilderness and left among wolves and bears to die because the blood was fresh, the smell of blood. All for some religious belief now held by most men to be harmless. All happening in this country of ours. The last 300 years require the fullest confirmation, yet the facts are not disputed about what the Puritans did to the Baptists and the Quakers. For more than 40 years after the landing of the Pilgrims, there was no Baptist church in Massachusetts. Not that they weren't Baptists, but there was no Baptist church. The first Baptist church constituted in that state was uh, Swansea on the south side near Rhode Island line. Again, Rhode Island is the what? The mother of all liberty. Beginning of this movement, many other Baptist churches in this country was in Wales. But as God had preserved his scattered and hidden people in the Piedmont and Holland, in the Piedmont and Holland, Baptists were chased out of the what we call Asia Minor, all the way through England, France, and they hid in the mountains against the, the Muslims and the Church of England and the Baptists, or not the Baptists and the Catholics. It says they formed an uninterrupted succession of witnesses to the truth. So now in Wales, multitudes of these uh, sequestered people unbroken in spirit, formed a regular chain of true and faithful witnesses to that gospel which they had received from their Christian ancestors in former, in former centuries. And remember, the people that went into this area were Paul's disciples, Putins and Claudia. St. Patrick was a Baptist missionary, not a Catholic, he was a Baptist missionary when he went into Ireland from Britain. They received from the Christian ancestors of former centuries, which they preserved in their quiet and fertile valleys, 
shut up by lofty mountains from the rest of the world as if God had designed these mountains fastness as the barriers for protection for his chosen faithful people against the corruptions and assaults of the papal hierarchy. The papal hierarchy and the Muslim hierarchy. You have to realize that Muslims came all the way into Spain for 300 years. That those beautiful Lebanon stallions were the Muslim war horses. As it seems have been part of the wise agreement arrangement of the providence for the preservation that they should be kept away in obscurity. The Mennonites and the Amish are descendants of these people. Their obscurity, subsequent persecution and deaths make it very hard to, to trace their lineages. But they were there. It's like rivers sometimes go underground. Brother Ben Bogard one time, Dr. Ben, ben Marcus Bogard spoke one time and he said, Baptists are like bees. He said, since God created bees, there's never been a century, not one day, one, one minute, and one hour that bees didn't exist. Now he said, we can't trace the bees all the way back to the creation of God, but we know that they were there all the time. He said, Baptists are like bees. He said, Baptists are like a river that, that goes underground and flows underground many, many miles sometimes. Baptists went underground for many centuries, hundreds of years, millennia, hiding, trying to preach the Word of God, separating themselves from the world. That's why the Amish and Mennonites are so weird, according to today's standards, because they were those people. What is chiefly found concerning these Welsh Christians in the ecclesiastical and secular histories of their later contemporaries are but scattered fragments which their enemies in the church and the state of England would have gladly thrown into obscurity and contempt. The Baptist Church and Society in Warren, Rhode Island May the 18th, 1845, and in Providence, 1845. He said that many of the Baptist churches in this country derived origin from, origin from the Baptist churches in Wales and in the valleys of the Piedmont, Maryland. In your DNA, you, your family went into the valleys of the Piedmont. Your family were also Huguenots. Yeah. Sure did. Baptist Church in Wales, a country which has always been a nursery for their peculiar principles. By the way, when Roman Empire went in and tried to conquer Wales, they couldn't do it. They finally agreed. They were fighters. They finally agreed that if they would join the Roman Empire, they could be citizens. Instead of fighting against them, they could fight for them. Multitudes of Welsh immigrants who left their fatherland brought with them the seeds of Baptist principles and their ministers and members laid the foundation of many Baptist churches in New England. Over there among my history libraries is the Churches of the Valleys of the Piedmont by Samuel Moreland. It gives the very names of the people that the Catholic Church went in there. These people have been secluded in the Valleys of Piedmont for centuries. So, and, and you out there that, that studied the Bible, they had some of the original, they said, autographed Bibles, scriptures, by Paul, by Matthew, etc. They had the original scriptures. The Catholic Church went in there and went in there and raped and pillaged. They took the young girls and raped them. After they raped them, they cut their breasts off. They fried them and ate them. They took rods and stuck them up through their private organs and walked around parading them around naked. They burned them at the stake. They burned them in caves. They burned their church house. They burned their cattle and they killed everything that, that lived among them, dogs and cattle. Burned all their food stuff. And some escaped and there we have the Amish and we have the Mennonites. 
They went into Russia, they went into China, they went to the area, they went to Germany, and they came to America. Over there among another book is a, a set of books that I have, the Ecclesiastical History. It talks about the Paulicians and how for hundreds of years they had certain beliefs, all the way from the times of the Apostles. Those books are go back to 1798 when they were printed. The Baptists to them were evil, but they wrote about them. And when you read about them, they weren't such bad people. They denied baptism would save your soul. They denied church buildings, that the altars in church buildings were anything in the Catholic Church but nothing but dead men's bones and no more sacred than a coyote's out in the field. They talked about marriage as an as a absolute detestable origin in the Catholic Church. They believed in marriage, all right. They were married, but they wouldn't go get a, a marriage license from the state. They believed in baptism, all right, but they didn't believe in baptism for salvation. They believed in church membership, but not membership in the Catholic Church. And they preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. They did not, they did not adhere to any of the, uh, the doctrines of Catholicism or the Church of England. And Samuel Morley went in there and he wrote these things back. And also, Ecclesiastical History of the Churches. Back to the Churches of the Valley of the Piedmont. Terrible things happen that you might have liberty. And the people that want liberty today, the atheists, the cults, they want freedom from religion. They don't want freedom of religion. They want freedom from religion. The homosexuals want to be looked upon as a master race. The lesbians the same way. Transgenders, they want to go in and compete. Men that were born men want to go in and compete with women in women's sports. Cheaters and liars surround our land now. People that are screaming the woke theology and philosophy. Constantly fighting for their rights in a land that their rights were basically bought by the blood of Quakers and Baptists. That's a story of liberty in America, where it came about. It didn't come from Puritans. It didn't come from the Catholic Church. It didn't come from the Church of England. It came from the Baptists in this land. Our Father, we send forth this message that might honor and glorify you and the history of your people that you preserved down to the ages and the Bible that they brought with them. Father, please forgive me where I fail you. In Jesus' name.